In this lesson, we will look at the fundamentals of using Tailwind CSS utility classes, and along the way, we will build a decent button with a nice hover effect that is responsive and also works with dark mode. So let's go. Now we're going to be using this Next.js Tailwind template that we set up in a previous lesson, but you're free to bring in any Tailwind application that you might have. Currently, we are rendering just a simple div with the text demo, and we can run this application by executing npm run dev and visiting localhost 3000. And we see this demo text. To start demoing Tailwind classes, we will create a component called button within the components folder with the file button.tsx. It's going to be a pretty basic component, and it's actually just going to render the browser native button with the children that are passed into this component. Back in our homepage, we will replace the demo text with this button component, passing in some text, for example, Tailwind Fundamentals. And that's it for the setup. For the rest of this lesson, we will be looking at this button component and customizing it with Tailwind. Now the Tailwind preloaded base CSS normalizes a bunch of stuff for different browsers and gives you a clean state for a number of components, including the browser native button tag. So you can see that we get a pretty non-button looking button by default, but this is great because now you can create it exactly the way you want and it's going to behave the same across all the browsers. Now the key way that you would use Tailwind CSS is by using its utility CSS classes, which we can pass to the class name property of a React component. Now we will start off by modifying the foreground color for this particular button. We can set any color with text dash color name. For example, to provide a nice light shade of blue, we can go with text dash blue dash 100. Similarly, for the background color, we can use the BG dash property. For example, BG dash blue dash 500. With these two changes, a button should already start to look more like a button, and we can see that when we jump to the UI. Now Tailwind ships with a number of predefined colors, and we can find them on the Tailwind documentation site, and we can use that with a number of Tailwind utilities. For example, right now you've seen us use it with text dash as well as BG dash. Now the next thing that you would probably expect a button to have is some form of padding, and we can provide that with the P dash utility. Now Tailwind works on top of a design system, that is, the numbers that you see over here, which are 0, 1, 2, 3, are not exactly pixel values. They are a part of a well-defined scale, so your UI is going to be much more consistent if you are just going to use the values from the scale. Now, the p-utility provides the same value of padding for all dimensions, that is, top, bottom, left, right. So by using p5, we are providing 5 units of padding in all dimensions, as you can see over here. Now, in addition to p-dash, there is pt-dash, which is for top, PR dash, which is for right, PB dash, which is for bottom, and PL dash, which is for left. In addition, there is PX for both left and right, that is the X dimension, and PY, which is both top and bottom, that is the Y dimension. Now, the same naming convention works with a number of other properties as well, for example, M dash, which is for margin, that can also be MT, MR, MB, MX, MY, and so on. Now it's conventional to have buttons with a bit more padding on left and right and a bit less on top and bottom, and that's exactly what we will do with PX2 and PY1. Now another utility worth looking at is the height utility which we specify with H dash, and this takes all of the same values that we previously saw in spacing. For example, H40 gives us a nice tall button. A closely related utility is the W dash utility, which is for the width and W40 gives us a button that is constrained to the 40 unit in our design system. Now you can also provide percentage values for width and height. For example, you can provide W-1 over 2 and because 1 over 2 is 50%, it's going to take 50% of the width from the parent container. And similarly, you can provide a value called full, which is going to take 100% of the parent container. And then there's a special value called auto, which is essentially the same as saying, give me as much space as my content needs. And that's the default for buttons anyways, so we can remove that for now. Now, one thing that might be piercing in this button is its sharp edges, and we can fix that by using the rounded utility. Just like other utilities, it's on a design system, and we can use the medium value for our particular use case by specifying MD. And now one fancy CSS property that we can use is the shadow, and that's also on the design system, so we use shadow-md. And when it comes to fancy things, subtle is best, so I understand if you can barely see it. Now this gives us a nice opportunity to talk about another concept within Tailwind, and that is the concept of variants. We can provide variants for a lot of things, for example, we can provide a variant for when we hover over something, and we can do that with hover colon. Now with this change, the shadow will only appear when we hover over the button. And we can see that in the UI, hopefully now you should be able to see the shadow a bit better. 
Now just providing a subtle shadow is probably not enough to indicate the user that they are hovering over something. So an additional property that we will change will be the background color and we will do that with hover colon bg dash and this time we're going to provide the background color blue 600. And now you can see that our button is already starting to look a bit better. But having drastic changes between CSS properties is probably not ideal. You probably want to have some nice transition in between. And we can do that quite easily with Tailwind by using the utility transition all. So we don't have to list every single property that we will be modifying. And then we want duration of 200 milliseconds. For that we will use the duration dash 200 utility. With these two utilities added, when we hover on the button and hover off, we get a very nice user experience. Now there are a number of other variants provided by Tailwind as well and a few key ones are those for responsive design. They take the conventional names that you might expect such as SMMDLG and they correspond to different screen sizes. Now the key to being successful with responsive design with or without Tailwind is to think mobile first. So on a mobile we want this button to be full width and that's why we will use the utility W-4. And on a medium sized screen going all the way to the top, we would want the width to resort to the default of auto which is content sizing. Now with this md colon w dash auto, on a small screen it is still full width, but as soon as we hit the screen size of medium, it goes to being auto width. And when we squeeze back to a small screen, it goes to full width. Now in addition to the media queries for screen size variants, another common variant that people have started to use is that for dark mode. Now I have my Mac in dark mode and you can probably guess that because the title bar of all of my windows is currently black. Now you can target the dark mode by using the dark colon variant and we will customize the text color and the background color and we can even combine variants. For example, we are combining the dark and the hover variant to modify the hovered dark background color. And now with these changes in place, our button is automatically going to become a nice dark button if the user's computer is in dark mode. Now that's it for the concept of using the various variations and the various utility classes. But at this point, you can see that our class name property is becoming quite big. So let's look at one more tip that can help us organize this a bit better. We are going to simply cut the class name and create a new file called button.module.css, which is going to be a CSS module. Use a local class name called btn and use the Tailwind directive called at apply that takes a number of Tailwind utility classes. We paste in what we copied from the class name and now whenever we use the btn class, it will apply the same features that are provided by these utilities. Now you can use this btn class just like you would use any other CSS module. There's nothing Tailwind specific about it. We bring in the CSS module into this name called styles and then we can access this btn class by using styles.btn. And our button continues to work as you would expect, but now it's being styled by this single class name that is being generated by CSS modules. Now a good thing about moving it into a CSS file is that you can organize it into multiple lines and even add comments. For example, this portion is dealing with some hover customization and this portion is dealing with some responsive size changes. And that pretty much covers the fundamentals of using Tailwind CSS utilities. Now with all things design, learning the concept is one thing, but applying it creatively is quite another. So if there is a particular design that you would like me to cover, leave that in the comments below. Thanks for watching till the end. Smash that like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.